ಶಾಲಾ ಕಪ್ ನಮ್ ಡೇ uh thank you so much nisia for agreeing to sit down for a chat i am so honored and flattered that you actually you know accepted my invitation and you've come home thank you so much i'm really uh, glad that you could make it ah uh, no worries it's very kind of me uh, kind of you to invite me here actually so i'm i'm very happy to be here just uh, i'm asking out of curiosity yes. because uh, you're one of uh, like i know of you like a lot of people mm-hmm. uh, in bangalore and we bumped into each other uh, um, very uh, vaguely so when i did tell you about this thing and i sent you some mm. videos of other guests what was your reaction like how did you i like, i'm curious randomly what was your reaction i thought that you had a very interesting spectrum of people that you interviewed and uh, uh, people doing things that i d- never heard of also you know so it was very interesting actually i saw all the links that oh, you okay, that okay, you gave okay, me okay, okay. so it it was very interesting actually like i mean things that you don't even know exist uh, you know was something that you brought out in your podcast yeah some of them some of them were doing yeah that, that's the reason i uh, can you uh, reduce it by one notch this down. one no one notch one <laughs> notch yeah yeah uh, the reason i'm asking is like i i mean i don't know you too well and i wasn't uh, too well connect, uh, right. connected with you and i'm like you know it was a little awkward you know like a uh, hey, because we don't it's not a viral show it's not a huge show yet right. and it does it's not getting tons of views um so i always feel a little you know awkward asking people that i don't know too well hey would you like to you right. know, come and sit down but i'm quite glad that uh, you know like you uh, so far at least uh, despite the uh, no real agenda or no real <laughs> reward right behind this people have been uh, kind enough like you to come and sit and have a chat and i think that itself is an interesting aspect of the city i suppose i mm. mean i'm sure it's possible anywhere i'm mm. sure mm. but uh, my experience of this show right uh, people are quite willing yeah people are willing to yeah i think i think it's because it's probably a fun thing to do so I suppose. so why not i suppose i suppose why not you know um i didn't mention this to you um when earlier before we started recording because you <laughs> you you asked me if uh, we met before right and yes. it's true what i told you was true the right. last time we met right was at ricky studio um many many years ago at least i don't know at least 7 8 years ago maybe more maybe close to 9 10 or something mm. we met briefly at his at his studio ricky cage's recording studio uh, i think you were working with him on a music project for something or was Probably. he helping you with a music project i'm, I'm not, not sure, sure. Yeah. he's <laughs> ricky goes to was a student of yours right that's how you know him for a very short while okay yeah <laughs> So what I told you about our meeting many mm. many years ago mm. is true, but we have met even earlier. Oh, we have. <laughs> but it was so long ago uh. that I wasn't sure if it'll if you'll remember when I tell you. Okay. For a very brief while, I was a student of yours. Huh? You were <laughs> in Chennai. In Chennai, when oh. you were taking classes in Chennai. I uh, used to come to Chennai I think every other weekend yes, to take classes. Yes, that's right. That's right. Every two weeks or three yes. weeks so uh, for through, vocal, yeah. So Timothy Madhukar, Timmy was correct, a good friend. Correct, correct. Timothy, yeah. And uh, Timmy would uh, I I I had a thing I used to, when I was young like mm. most people I said hey, I want to I want to sing. And I used to sing in you know uh, church groups and I used to sing ah. just for the you know like a lot of young people who like to sing. Okay. I, I used to you know try singing. So Timmy said hey not bad you know but you should improve your vocal thing right. and I said yeah but I don't know can you can you get me a teacher? Yeah, right. Said, There's this teacher who comes from Bangalore this mm. vocal teacher. Teacher. Okay. Comes from Bangalore wow. every other weekend. <laughs> it's hard to get in, it's so it's gonna take some time. <laughs> and she'll kick you out if you're not going, <laughs> if you don't work hard. So I can try putting your name in, but uh, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, what's her name? Her name is Nisia, and I don't know if I had to call you directly or he called you, whatever. Uh. But I think I waited for about three, four months. Oh, really? And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. And, and, I, and I joined your classes. Oh, you did? Yeah. But thing was, I was already in my early twenties, and I was I had a job, so I was bunking a few classes, and I just about ah. making for some classes. Ah. It was also around the time when you decided to stop Chennai classes. Oh, then. it was towards the end of that. Towards the ah. very end of your okay. uh, Chennai chapter. I see. Maybe the last two three months. Oh, I and see. And I was worried every class. You know, this is the class I get kicked out because <laughs> I just all the whatever homework you give, I give last. I do last minute. You know. I can assure you that you're not the only one <laughs> who feels that way. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm gonna get sacked. I'm not sure that I'm gonna get kicked out of the class next week. But then you informed oh. that you know what, I'm stopping my Chennai classes. Okay, okay. 
okay i'm not getting sacked fine perhaps that's yeah. why your face was so so more familiar probably, more probably. but that was what i'm telling you mm. was a good that was a long time ago 17 years ago long 17, time ago, 17 yeah. years ago um so yeah i'm sure i look very different which is why you must be like no oh, i've seen this guy yes <laughs> exactly some somewhere somewhere yeah, yeah. that's right so okay. that is how wow. i've met you so technically i have been your student and you were my teacher ah. in what feels like another life but very much in this you know lifetime and not too long ago but yeah it's been a while right. so yeah that's how i know of you wow. you know so small world so i i i wanted uh, i didn't want to Spoil the surprise uh, downstairs. Okay, <laughs> okay. Said, no, no, it's too good to not <laughs> capture on camera. <laughs> okay. So yes, so I've I've technically uh, known you for a very long time. Mm. Uh, we are friends on Facebook. Mm. So I, I yes, uh, I'm not, I don't I'm not a I'm not big on Facebook, mm. but of course I've seen uh, <laughs> some of the things you've put up, and I and what I know of you from back then is that you are uh, um, uh, a pianist. You're yes. also a vocalist. Yes, um, and you also run an academy. Very yes it's actually a trust it's the majoli music trust so that was set up in 2011 so we just just turned 11 years old actually uh previously uh i mean i used to 2011 also 2011 years okay 11 years old. so last year was your 10th yes, your anniversary yes we couldn't do much because of the corona virus situation right, right. otherwise i would have had big plans you know for big imagine. concerts i can imagine stuff to do but that did not happen unfortunately yeah so when i uh, uh, so previously to that i was teaching privately from home uh, both piano and voice then i started the bangalore society for performing arts okay. in the year 2000 uh, see i am not a very business oriented person right so that lasted for 5 years <laughs> <laughs> left me completely bankrupt the bangalore uh, society, society for, performing. for performing arts yes it took me 4 years to pay back what uh, money what lost i lost yeah in the 5 years that you ran it yes that's oh, right goodness. that's right it's okay i did it you know it it was an interesting experience for me it was a great learning experience on what things i should not do so the basically the idea of the bangalore society for performing arts it was an association okay it was not a commercial em- enterprise so besides my uh, private teaching i was focused on encouraging local musicians especially the young people so i used to feature uh, uh, musicians from chennai uh, the young people you know who are very talented i had something called the young achievers concert the young performers concert and then you had the professionals from around india my problem was sponsorship I don't know how to ask for it. Right. So I used to spend a lot of time going to these uh, you know commercial establishments like uh, builders and jewelers <laughs> and all that and I I don't know how to talk right. you know right. about this it's not right. my cup of tea. Right. I tried it it's a different uh, uh, completely, art altogether. Completely yeah. and I knew I wasn't good at it. Sometimes I was lucky sometimes I was not. So that because I was not a lot of the time that's where the money used to go. Right. You know but right. uh, for me you know i i have a goal okay and it doesn't matter what happens along the way whether it's good bad right. i want to do that right you right. know so right. i will do whatever it takes to reach there no matter you know if if i fail right. along the way or whatever right. that concerts got to happen means that concerts got to happen that was how i used to do things and i still do i mean now it's a little bit on the downside because Of, of what has happened, of course, and I'm also older, so my energy levels are not right. as you know as mm, as, as much I, as it was as I was ten years, fifteen years. Exactly, ago. exactly. I think with age, uh, um, while I think all our faculties uh, can improve, and I think uh, I genuinely believe that uh, aging. can make you better at most things at but some the physicality things. and the energy levels yeah. absolutely those are, agree those are two, that that's just something time takes away from you absolutely agree so i used to you know do so many events almost single handedly i was running around organizing trying to get money trying to look after my career as a pianist myself and my students it was mad i used to work such long hours such long hours but it didn't bother me you know because right. i loved it so much that that uh, you know buzz for oh yeah we're going to have a great concert oh yes we're going to have this right. concert yes this person's going to come yes right. that this master class this workshop all that was fine but at the end of 5 years i had to take that very sad decision 
you know yeah. uh, to close it because right. i'm like i cannot continue this way financially right, right. so that closed right. Right. I went back to private teaching and there was no nothing. I was concentrating on my own concerts and stuff like of that. Course. And then there was there were few teachers working under me privately. So one of them was with me for 14 years and he himself now is an accomplished teacher. Oh nice. Uh so he used to say, "Man, start a school. Start a school." I said, "No, no, no, no. No, I can't do this. I can't do this." It took him about um six more years of convincing and i finally decided okay let's take it at a different angle okay so i thought okay let's start a trust the majorly music trust we'll do the probably the same things but this time this time as a little little bit smarter <laughs> saying that we are going to give classes also okay because the bangalore society for performing arts there were no classes okay. it was just organizing concerts that was the mistake i made right Right. So with the trust we are going to have classes and what we get is what we are going to sustain our concerts right. with right. came little bit late <laughs> but it came okay it's like thing okay <laughs> so uh, so because of that we've been able to to kind of sustain ourselves right. Right. we can't do big concerts because we don't have that kind of money right. and uh, I'm not going to run around for sponsorship because right. I know I suck at it right. <laughs> and and unfortunately we have been uh, uh uh denied our fcra twice what is the fcra the foreign contribution ah yeah yeah there is problem with the uh, yeah, getting we, money into the country we were right? not able to get it twice we applied twice so okay i said without that because i have my former professors from where i studied abroad right. and my friends who are so willing to contribute but they cannot do it because right. i have big dreams i want to do an opera i want to do a full scale musical i want to do all kinds of things but i cannot do it without money i can't do it we have the talent right no absolutely you know absolutely. but no 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 money to do it so we have small concerts we have the young performer series where i feature uh, young people under the age of 30 who are extremely talented in their voice or instrument right we have had, had done about 20 so far i think and Sorry, uh, you I know think, so, no worries no worries so and uh, we have uh, you know sometimes some foreign artists come down the faculty has performed right. i have performed uh, you know uh, so this has been going on but on low key right yeah right and uh, we really uh, make sure that our students are not just about coming for class and going home right uh, because i firmly believe in a very well rounded music education so we have right. internal assessments we have them perform at mini concerts we have our annual students concerts they have other things to do related to right. music so right. that you know they right. build their idea of of being a musician as something else than just coming for piano class going home practicing a bit and coming so which is the usual uh, which is the usual music education music education <laughs> yes so but one thing was when i was seriously thinking okay let's start this trust i was like what will make us unique what will make us unique and uh, one day i saw in the newspaper uh, a very great ustad who was in his prime obviously in his younger days who had gone abroad to represent india for indian music and this article was talking about his pathetic state of being in a small one room apartment uh, flat in uh, varanasi like a small one not enough food to eat not enough uh, he was ill medicines passed away like that lonely old man that struck me i'm like this oh, this yeah, will not do yeah. this will not the do story i said of many an artist no so i said see we can help everybody but at least you know where the government is not helping maybe we can do so one of the main ideas of starting the trust was to create a pension fund for aged and infirm okay, musicians okay, okay and we did that after the second year of starting right we are not helping too many people because we don't have oh, that kind have of money correct okay but we are helping a few and it has made a great difference so every right. month we send them a certain amount Nice. to help them with nice. rent or medicines nice. or whatever and i think that is one of the best things that the trust has been doing since we since we no, started I, i think i did not know about this yeah. and i'm sure many people do not <laughs> um 
but i think it's uh, it's quite it's quite compelling because yeah music is one of those industries where at least i would suppose half the people mm. at least half the people involved are uh, quite broke absolutely at least half see and the thing is i'm sorry to say this but the country uses its indian musicians i'm talking about you know carnatic hindustani uh, whatever it is they send them all over the world they you know uh, uh, get a lot of pride for india and then once they are of no use they are not looked after yeah. and i think that's absolutely yeah. criminal yeah so at least okay if nobody else can we can try a little bit because see i know that in other countries in the west you have societies yes. for retired musicians yes. and they yes. get some kind of help i'm not sure why we don't have that yeah. here yeah i think uh, <laughs> barring a very few who mm. are of course conferred mm. accolades and mm. you know, who mm. get awards and bharat ratnas i think the lo- most musicians ours is not i think today i would say maybe mm. it wasn't the case many years ago actually i don't know I should mm. look up at history but mm. i think today ours has become a culture where music is not at the core of it that's right music and musicians right do not uh, i think uh, play a pivotal role in at least in society's point of view right they don't play a pivotal role in uh, the functioning of society right it's seen as an indulgence and yes. therefore the focus is only on popular music right right, and, right. Uh, which uh, which singer is able to sing uh, be part of a hit song right. the music director that's made a, uh, a viral you know right. uh, tune they make money because there's commercial value in it right but if you're a musician who's purely in it for the craft of for the, the music for the craft of it and serious music, serious right? music yeah. serious music yeah. um that unfortunately can only be discerned by by a few many. yes exactly it's not a niche audience it's, yeah it's a niche audience in the sense is that unfortunately like most i would say uh, uh things of true value mm. right and not to many people though the value of this yeah i absolutely agree uh, with you things on music is one of those things that yeah. if you want to understand music that is true mm. like what's playing now I mean, right right mm. i think what makes it special is that most people can't get it it's so the way that you were talking and it was just so dramatic at that time <laughs> it was like so coincidental <laughs> right? i think to understand and appreciate this it takes a certain amount of i think uh, um, what can i say uh, i think a ability and b desire also i mm, suppose mm. and i think today our culture has come to a point where mm. forget western classical mm. indian classical that's which right. is that's our, right which is technically our indigenous that's right. right that's right even that is not has no patronage it's not mm. no patronage mm. in musicians mm. and it's so funny people with money are not that inclined to be in music that's right right and people who are in music mm. and who really want to be in music mm. really are after the soul of mm, uh, their mm, craft mm. come from uh, forget not being able to make money most <laughs> of them come from backgrounds also they don't have too much money ironic mm. unless sometimes uh, uh, people affluent people who yeah, send their kids do, yes exactly yes you know they if that's they see right. promise they that's do right. send that's their children right. to the right teachers and all that's yes. a very unfortunate and there are also musicians who don't understand how to make money right right that's also there because right. because they are so concerned with their art you know that 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 particular department right you know is right. is just uh, almost non existent like yeah. you know i, I would so i could tell like you that. of the i could tell you since i uh, i interact with people mm. from uh, lo- uh, different uh, fields of the arts mm. because of what i do and mm. stuff mm. um it's true of case of all artists <laughs> <they're> illustrators <laughs> are the musicians uh, whether they actual writers see i'm see look, look at me like i'm i'm a hack i'm a copywriter for most of my life i worked in advertising right which is not really writing no it's not really it's writing. not really writing it's just uh, <laughs> using words and language and communication skills right. to sell a product that's right you know and a con man hack like me <laughs> manages to do somewhat uh, somewhat well or right. rather well because uh, it is a commercial uh, skill that's right but if you were a really true writer mm. unless you manage to sell that uh, write that one best seller right or write right. that book that somehow people like right right and unfortunately most best sellers are not exactly they are not exactly the best books the yeah best books. Yes. some of them are some of them yes some of them yes the book prize i know that if right. you win a book prize that right. is for the uh, intellectual mind that's like right. even the that's jury right. is, uh, looks at it from a very uh, yes. what can i say yes a uh, craft perspective that's right but apart from that yeah. the uh, best sellers on the newspapers yeah, top yeah. 10 and all is, right. is um, like chetan bhagat no disrespect to him <laughs> 
but he's not a writer's writer right, right. he's a popular writer right. uh, and i think that's just unfortunately true for all arts the people that are really doing uh, that craft or art uh, for the mm. what can i say for the for this for, for the joy of the pure purity of that craft yeah they just don't know how to i think the struggle has been there for eternity and i, I think it's going to continue also but i'm sure uh, in, his, in their <laughs> times it was this the beauty is i suppose in their time chopin or uh, even beethoven wasn't this the commercial music no uh see actually uh, in a way yes in a way no because you actually had patronage from right. the aristocracy right so because of that they were able to sustain also however uh the interesting fact about beethoven was see prior to beethoven all the musicians famous musicians that you know of were employed either by the court or by the church okay so they had uh, they had employment they it was employment Mu- oh. writing music was a job a job so it was like you know like uh, uh, you know the 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 concerned person at the church was like okay mr bach uh, we have this special uh, uh, you know sunday coming up uh, is the feast of such and such so we need a cantata or we need a whatever it is so you'll need to write for it i mean can you imagine writing so much music like every week wow. for the church i mean it was a job you sat down and wrote you did not wait for inspiration right that happened later that idea of getting inspired and writing happened in the romantic era that is chopin's era oh which okay. is uh, your so we are talking about 1820 is to about 1900 okay. okay okay so this was what was called the romantic era okay. so prior to beethoven who was who passed away about 1827 or 1828 i think prior to that uh, prior to him uh, musicians were employed okay so mozart was employed okay all of them were employed it was so a job and they were paid a monthly sum or whatever it was you were paid and so you know he was employed by the court and you know said so, okay we are having a a hunting party uh, on sunday please <laughs> write nice music for it yes sir and he would write wow yeah it was it was like that it was it was a paid so job they were commercial artists and technically in a way in yes a way, right? that's in right a way. and then when beethoven came into the picture you know he himself was a different temperament altogether he was what what you would call the first freelance artist okay he was he refused to be under anyone okay okay so he was the first one is like i'm writing the music that i want right if you like it that's great if you don't you like it i money, don't care but if you don't like it yeah i don't care he used to write music send it to publishers fortunately they loved it and they published it and that's how he got money and he was commissioned also by members of the aristocracy, right. aristocracy and right. other people right. you know to write so because he made a name for himself yes right. and he was well in demand but um, you may know about his temperament he was very uh, a bit sullen a bit short tempered very you know had a fiery temper it shows in his music i suppose so uh, you know so he was the f- so called first freelance musician and after that there was no turning back after that chopin schumann list no one was employed by anyone okay okay they were their own so he started the trend that's right and the i mean uh, so he inspired other musicians to follow the same yes, pattern yes and the romantics you know they are in la la land a little bit right, you know it's right. like i can't write until you know so you know mendelson for example who is a, a contemporary of chopin he went to scotland and he saw the hebrides coast uh, you know mendelson. very stormy uh, okay. very stormy coast and he 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 saw it and he got inspired and he wrote a piece called hebrides so basically a lot of the romantic era composers were either inspired by a poem by a painting by a landscape by something connected and then they would actually write trying to depict that oh. and that is what's called program music so meaning these music people with started a, that sorry this this era and these yes, musicians yes the, it's not that it wasn't there before but mostly the the music was uh, you know very technically sound like you had a form this is what you need to do you were not like okay i like that painting let me write about right, it right. it was not like that there were few instances of that right. where music had titles okay right. uh, or uh, otherwise they were in the title of the form that they were written but from this era onwards it became about oh look at that beautiful moon there was a story to it there was a story to it right. and this became huge in the romantic era 
Oh, yeah. So and Chopin is one of these composers. So technically, <laughs> Beethoven is the world's first freelance musician. Exactly. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah, exactly. Wow, that is such an interesting piece of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, you think? I mean, uh, sorry. Uh, before I ask you other questions, sure. uh, how did you become a musician? Are, are you from Bangalore? I am not from Bangalore. Okay. Um, but you've that, been here for many years, way. I'm assuming. Very many years. I think 26 now. Okay. 26 years. Okay. So very much Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So mine is a, lo a long story. Uh, basically, uh, my mom, she left Kerala. Samoti? No, uh, not the cup? it's still here. Okay. If you want another cup, I can No, tell no worries, no worries. So she left Kerala very long time ago to uh, take up a job in Brunei. Oh, Brunei, which is to Burma? No, Brunei, Brunei. No, Sorry, no, Brunei. It's close it's to Singapore. Close to Singapore. That's right, yeah. She never heard of it before, never knew it existed, but she went. And uh, then a few years later, she got married and she brought my father along. So my father, I will say, and not just because he's my father, but he was a very far-sighted and very... Indian or Bruneian? No, from Kerala. Oh, from Kerala, okay. Very far-sighted and very intelligent and a very intellectual man. So, um, my mother unfortunately had two miscarriages before me and one after me. So, when he learned that she was pregnant with me, I mean, obviously the deed is done and you know, the already the gender of the <laughs> child is... A, but he used to get down on his knees and pray for a girl. Oh, wow. He wanted a girl. He okay. never wanted a boy. He had his reasons for that. And uh, he says, first of all, I want a girl and the girl needs to be a musician. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I was born. There was. So his desire were, was for you to be a musician. Uh, to be a musician. Fortunately, I was, I think, born talented. Okay. Because he started me off when I was two and a half years old. On? On the piano. What are you saying? Yeah. But oh, wow. even before that, you see his desire to put music in my head. So, uh, I came back from the hospital after 10 days, after I was born. And immediately, he used to put classical music, Western classical music, 24 hours a day for me to listen to. And that somehow worked. That somehow worked. So, it kept, it kept going on and on. I was sleeping or feeding or wow. playing around or whatever it was. And at two and a half, he decided, okay, she should start learning the piano. So, obviously, I can't read anything. You know, I was small, so I was my feet were dangling from the stool. So what he used to do was he was a very, very he was not a pianist. He was just like trying stuff out for his daughter. Okay. So what he used to do was he used to sit in the night when every my mom and I were sleeping. He used to, you know, learn these little tunes from these beginners' books. And then he used to teach me the next so day. So he was learning the piano to be able to teach you the piano. Yes, that's right. Exactly. So I used to learn by rote. Whatever he played, I learned by ear. So he used to do this until I was four. When I was four, I had the method book in front of me and could play everything from beginning to end. At four years At old. At four years old. Wow. Yeah. So he, he, and that's how the journey went. But basically. it's interesting. Uh, of course, <laughs> you had to have... Um, I mean, clearly, neither of your parents were accomplished musicians. No, my mom was an amateur pianist. She used right. to play the guitar. Right. My dad couldn't play piano too much, but right. he learned for my sake, like what he could teach me. But he used to play the violin a bit, and he used he had learned Hindustani classical oh. also. No, but but you <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I think his desire for you to be a musician, yes. and I think the way he nurtured you from right. the time of birth, right enabled you yes uh, i mean talent is subjective right but the process mm. that he employed mm. uh, ensured 100 percent success that by I the time so, you're yeah. four years old wow <laughs> yeah i mean it's not like those uh, it's not like you at two years old sat up and said i want to play the piano no not yeah, at all he just like playing. okay here oh we go <laughs> let's start you up <laughs> he actually uh, uh, planned Pro program me basically. Yeah, he programmed <laughs> you into becoming a musician. That's, That's right. amazing. That's yes. amazing. It goes to show that with the, uh, I mean, uh, with enough, uh, I guess, stimulus, any child can, uh, I mean, of course, uh, talent does play a role yeah, in your yeah. own propensity and, of course, your own skill sets. All that do have a factor. 
uh, and that again uh, factors in i suppose once you are trying to reach for excellence yes but at the basic of anything i mm. think if you can teach children uh, mm. it's incredible that your father had that kind of uh, yeah, which is why i foresight, said which no? is why i wow. said you know he he was a man of tremendous vision wow you know so he made my mom learn the piano for me <laughs> she was not interested actually okay, okay. she was not interested she used okay. to sing hindi songs right. and all that she used right. to strum the guitar right. but he made her learn the piano because so she, said, so you could... because you need to be practicing and she needs to be hearing it but why was he so obsessed about you i have no, no idea, idea. <laughs> I but it is no clear idea. that his daughter must be a very musician. very clear So has to be a girl number that, one. Uh, has to be a musician number two. <laughs> so he was he proud of your uh, as you grew up and as you grew as a musician. Very much. Okay. Very much. And both of them supported me uh, so greatly. So when I finished high school, so you know we have Indian families in Brunei. It's not a large population. So all this happened Indian in Brunei, or all in Brunei. Okay. okay. So, so growing up happened in Brunei. Everything happened in Brunei. Born and brought up there. Finished my schooling there. So you know we have some Indian families, uh, you know, who some were teachers, doctors, you know, and uh, so when high school finished, you know, the the usual chatter. Oh, I'm going to send him to India to do MBBS. Oh, I'm going to send him to do engineering because at that time there was no university in Brunei. Okay. So we couldn't uh, further our studies right, there. We right. had to go overseas, right. wherever it was. Some right. some who had money would send to the uk mostly the indian families would send back to india right because our education here is pretty good yeah. i mean uh, of course much cheaper than uk but oh, also yeah. the standard of education right uh, so for the further uh, degrees so of course everyone was very curious what is nisia going to do i said i'm going to go study music and they're like <laughs> music i said yeah any problem because this was not it's not in the indian mindset right even today yeah, even, even today, today it was and, worse and than this was many years ago 25 years ago no, i'm not going to say okay okay <laughs> so many years ago many years ago well, let's, let's was, put it uh, that way even worse <laughs> so they they were like astounded and they were like okay poor poor family i don't know what they are doing with their kid you know that kind of thing so yeah. fortunately their attitudes have changed of course, yeah. <laughs> but at that time it was a big shock right. and even the relatives were wondering what my father was doing yeah. why he was sending her to i'm like that's that's what i love yeah. that's what i yeah. want to do so mm-hmm. what what you know why 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 what's your problem with yeah. that yeah. you know so i we never bothered they used to talk they used to like what are you doing and all that we shouldn't just you, like shouldn't you uh, what can i say what will they say shouldn't you tell her better so the young girl ah, the, shouldn't the, you give her the right advice yeah and we like we are not bothered about what anyone says we are just going to do what we are supposed to uh, right. right so right right you so they know? supported you uh, learning very music. much very and much and that's how bangalore happened no first i went to singapore okay where i did a four year diploma in both performance and pedagogy uh, then i went to australia to the conservatory at uh, the at wapper that is western australian you, academy of performing arts teaching teaching okay, okay. teaching is pedagogy mm. in music terms pedagogy oh so teaching pedagogy means becoming a teacher Uh, yeah language. it's uh, it's uh, principles of teaching basically okay okay so then i went to australia to the conservatory there uh, which was under the western australian academy for performing arts so uh, my degree was supposed to be 4 years but because i did time in singapore and kind of reached a pretty good level they allowed me to complete my degree in 2 years instead of 4 oh wow okay because you already had the le- required proficiency yeah exactly so my audition kind of wowed the jury they said nice. you know what i think we'll admit you into the third as like that's wow. fantastic so i caught up i caught up and then after that uh, i had actually a great desire to stay in australia because i loved the country and i made a lot of friends and there were a lot of uh people from singapore and malaysia who had come so i had that set right because my right. my culture yeah uh is more southeast asian okay because i was born and brought up in brunei so it's right. a mixed culture right i have chinese friends i have malay friends i have eurasian friends i have indian friends nice and we all kind of just mix with each other and no one it's it, it's no one is like oh you are here or you're from there you're from nobody cared right you know we were a big classroom of uh, nice. girls and we just you know happily mingled with each other made friends for global village yeah exactly it was wonderful actually the yes. atmosphere in I which i imagine it must have been it and was, so interact with all these people mm, uh, in a music school must have been quite uh, so you know it was wonderful 
so you know i had the, uh, you know wonderful friends and very supportive professors who also wanted me to stay in australia unfortunately that did not happen so i hold an indian passport so i had to uh-huh. come here okay. i couldn't go back to brunei because as far as music is concerned there was no profession as scope. such to be yeah okay. not much scope to, to follow okay. yeah it's okay. a small place right. and right. music was not that developed as right. such which was right. why they had to right. send me abroad to study music in the first place right. so but it's a nation with a lot of wealth though from what i understand oh, that is there that is yeah. there i mean they they you no know, touch would uh, their citizens are happy yeah. and yeah, all yeah, that yeah. is fine yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah it's not really the uh, what can i say uh, Musical, not not the place paradise. for <laughs> yes things have changed a lot I'm now sure. though lots sure. of wonderful schools have come up and they're producing very good local musicians but in my time it was not like I that i can imagine so i came back to india and i was in delhi first actually for one and a half years sorry to say but i couldn't uh, handle it <laughs> and uh, then came to even bangalore on the first one even on the show <laughs> and came to bangalore and been here in between i went to malaysia for a bit okay. for about 3 months and then came back again right and right. so i've been here ever since so bangalore uh the stupid question why did you decide <laughs> to stick on to bangalore was it purely musical reasons or because you just like the city or the culture what what was your major draw at that time um and did you think you'll be here for so long or was it no i did not think i yeah, would be here for so long because initially. I started my career my teaching career here I mean I was in Delhi yes but I was under a school it was not my own right so when I shifted here uh I was under a school for But a little bit how did you come to Bangalore was it through friends oh or? oh no 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 oh no 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 you know one thing about me <laughs> maybe I uh, inherited my mum's courage and daring see even when I went from Perth in Australia to Delhi I had no idea what I was going to do I just packed everything went to Delhi just got there like right now where should I get myself employed <laughs> you know it was so you like a family or friend nothing okay so fortunately through an aunt of mine there was a lovely family who took care of us for okay. a while until I could find my feet and find okay. a place to live and all okay. that kind of thing okay. but it was like that just got there without okay. anything and without you anything out in what hand. would happen Okay. Yes so as you got there and then i f- i found uh, a job uh, you know in a music school and uh, that happened for about one and a half years uh, and uh, then i thought okay i am not able to continue in the city okay. sorry but uh, was your problem with delhi uh, finances <laughs> or was it the culture or was it a combination of everything i think more of the second okay <laughs> the cultural it differences it was it was difficult to earn yeah. i will say, i won't say no mm. i was you know really uh, very tight with my budget and after so many years of studying mm, yeah. music and i'm talking about the, the academies you exactly, mentioned these yeah. are not uh, commercial music schools these right. are schools that, uh, that train you like serious musicians you serious know musicians, serious musicians right pedigree musicians yes. and after all that to struggle <laughs> financially no i i see i took everything as an adventure No, I never was that discouraging at all No not I mean I used to feel a bit sad like you know I couldn't go out to eat somewhere because I had only so much money left at right, the end of the right, month right. and all that I'm not I'm not the kind of person to indulge also But you never regretted being a musician Not at all not okay. one bit Like not, I wish I had not done this Not oh, one I wish bit. I no. become a doctor And then or uh, my family had some property here in Bangalore Okay and uh, so I thought okay let me try let me come here and see again with nothing in hand So just came here uh and just stayed in our place for a bit and uh, okay let's see where i can get myself into you know it was always like right. that just right. just go there and then see what happens yeah but bangalore <laughs> i suppose especially for your western classical yes. music must have been a better destination than delhi even 20 years ago but delhi is culturally very rich also no it is culturally very rich uh they do have fine teachers and uh, uh they are fine uh, there is fine local talent and all that but my problems with delhi were different i can i can i, I, so, I can guess so that, <laughs> so that way i felt much more comfortable in of bangalore course. in fact when i came was like <sighs> okay even today people despite all the urbanization right. even today while i think the bangalore that you came into and oh, bangalore was, 
one comes into today is very different very probably to different, different cities very different and yet uh, in comparison even today mm. there is a factor yes. to back yes <laughs> yes you know? yes there is a certain calm that's you know? right that's uh, right uh, in terms of people in terms of the weather also yeah. i mean you know I think the weather plays a huge role a huge role but just the general kind of chillness yes. of the people you I know i think people just come here to leave just behind exactly. something exactly chaotic I that's think. right that's right so in hindsight i'm thinking yeah. Yeah, because all the stories i've got so far people have come they've always come including me mm. leaving behind something chaotic right you know and like i don't know i i, I get to find out in a few minutes but me and others like me always came in thinking for a small time <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see we'll see after that year or two <laughs> right but you never leave yeah that's true totally. it's <laughs> that's like true. hotel california you know you can you can get here but you know it's very very difficult to leave that's true i mean personally i feel it's lost some of its charm I, because I of all the so. i believe because it's apartments it's and malls and all that but yeah. still there is something about it that uh, there is i think yeah. uh, a sort of uh, vibe i would call it yeah yeah uh, the bangalore vibe yeah which is what i'm trying to capture in the show through these conversations which is uh, alluring is it right you know, right which, which, yes uh, which makes it uh, despite uh, some of the chaos you face some of the times mm. you can't think of anywhere else to go true yeah because i've thought of other cities also but you know once i reached here and you know i've traveled a lot of course so and it's like no 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 this is always good to come back to no. <laughs> yeah um what is the culture of western classical music in bangalore uh, when you got here and even today uh well is it, chennai a better culture in that way or bangalore uh, see of- it's a slightly different culture i will say because in chennai most of the western classical music and people they associate western classical music with church music correct because lot of church choirs correct by default they are doing western classical music yeah. but of yeah. course they are doing sacred music mm-hmm. so a lot of people associate western classical music with sacred music and i'm like no 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 not at all because you have only seen choirs from church it's not all about church. hymns alone yes okay. because you have only seen choirs from church perform handel bach yeah. uh, mozart yeah. uh, you know uh, the the masses right. or the the cantatas or the oratorios or whatever it is so you think that this is all that is to western and i said it's not there's a lot of secular music that goes on as well right. sung for instruments orchestra right what not the like oh because they they don't know any different they, I think for them it's like oh it's church it's church music church music western classical, western classical music is church music it's uh, christian music <laughs> ah christian western music classical music yeah. is considered and that's christian and that's music. incorrect yeah. absolutely i mean look at the chopin uh, that we it's piano music it's not sacred it's secular no, there's nothing to do a lot of musicians with like i think was it beethoven who was a believer was he a believing christian or something a lot of uh, composers i think that i think that has had a huge influence on people in india right believing uh western classical, classical music is, is christian music and the other reason is uh especially chennai yeah. most people who learn and practice yeah. uh, western you know, classical music are christians are christians because the influence comes from the church that's they go right. to that's right so that way bangalore doesn't have that kind of uh you know oh, that kind of culture it's not a christian music no, in bangalore no no no, no i would have assumed the other way you around. have a lot of secular choirs in bangalore who do a mixture of sacred and secular music so the audience here is used to something different than what chennai audiences are used to in chennai uh-huh. and i think a lot of instrumental music a lot of importance of instrumental music is also there which is not sacred music okay okay so that way the perception of cla- western classical music in bangalore is different from the perception in okay. chennai okay yeah and uh, is there um, or what is the audience for western classical music in bangalore like is there an audience in, there is like? there is an audience uh, mostly made up of older people because they were brought up in that uh, you know fall out of the british tradition right. okay their parents played lp parents at home. played and you know they were made to learn right. you know that kind of thing they must have gone to convents. convent schools exactly right. where they were taught music so you have the older crowd but i'm happy to say that uh, there are much uh, younger people who also are very interested in learning the piano or violin or vocals or whatever who also come for concerts and that's very encouraging yeah. because some somehow people have this idea that oh western class music oh that's for old people it's not for young people you know but actually that's not true you see a lot of new faces in the audience who have come out of curiosity right. and when when they hear it they may not understand it 
but a lot of them they're like oh that's so nice oh that's so nice and then they explore it further right. and the the number of people who are learning western classical music is just growing and oh, growing so? oh that's, yes that's very uh, so many music schools yeah and uh, you know music schools who teach western classical music so many students so many students and that's wonderful in uh, again out of curiosity and yes. ignorance uh, <laughs> compared to other indian cities where would bangalore fit into the western classical music scene uh, top 3 top 5 or bad good generally i, I have no idea i think cuz chennai i know produces a lot of talent that's right. uh, and i think uh, uh, the churches are one way responsible that's i think right. i think also uh, chennai is a little more connected to music Uh, a lot more indian classical uh, yeah, and definitely classical music in general has a lot more patronage than chennai yes yes so i'm does. sure it's in the top 3 right, right? uh where does uh, bangalore uh, fare in that sense your <sighs> patronage and interest and passion patronage unfortunately i don't think there's a lot of it at all okay see mumbai has a different western classical culture as Uh, and that is mainly brought about because of the parsi population oh so they want that uh, okay uh, you know that that culture is very important to them right uh, so that's a different so vibe they, altogether they uh, listen to and participate in uh, yeah, western yeah. classical yes, music yes 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 and uh, delhi is a different thing for western classical i wouldn't say that the audience is the greatest in delhi mm. you have uh, the older crowd who appreciate but there are others who just come and you know just don't understand what's going on and don't know how to behave as audience actually it's members. okay to not understand what's <laughs> going on but you cannot then disturb that's uh, right that's right uh, that, uh, i have i i have, have, i have got i have found that experience in delhi every time i've played there and you're like what happens like you know you're talking and whispering and stuff not only that like you know you, uh, the b- whole body language oh yeah they I, keep shifting you no know, you know? they'll be like sitting like this oh <laughs> and then they'll be you know taking uh. out a boiled sweet <laughs> 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 and you're like oh my goodness why am i doing this and and i was doing there be a bunch of people in the audience doing this no i mean yeah, for you to get that every single time vibe. very oh my God. so because of that see as a performer um you know you get a vibe from the audience right. okay see i'll be playing the piano so i'm obviously listening to everything that i'm doing the tones that i'm making and i'm making sure that you know it's communicating to the audience yes and you can't do that when you're getting distracted by all these things that's why for western classical music the audience has to be 100% quiet otherwise we can't listen to right. ourselves it's not might you know so the fingers can make so many nuances on a key depending on the pressure and we can't hear that properly if someone's making noise see if you listen to this for example now it's a loud passage okay you have certain uh tension for that but suddenly if you want to make the next note connect from the previous in a different tone you have to do a different kind of pressure it's all very very minute and very it's a it's a it's an art i can only uh, okay, imagine so, so you cannot do that when you hear <coughs> and you know boil sweets and people yawning and people talking to each oh, other God. it's horrible kab kab khatam ho raha hai It's horrible. Yeah, so it's that good. way, I will tell you that the Bangalore audience is one of the best. Okay. They may not know. Some of them may not know what's up, but they respectfully listen. You must. I Now and then you will have a boiled sweet. Oh God. But but people are sitting and listening. Okay. Most, Most people, people are observing it. They are observing. Yeah. 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 So I, I would suppose <laughs> Chennai would also be people. Ah, Chennai also, also okay. yes. They are also okay. a good audience. audience. Uh, I've been to plays. Uh, I've been to Indian concerts. I, right. I don't not too many Western concerts. People know how to behave. Yes. Uh, mostly, whatever I've witnessed, uh, certain kind of etiquette is maintained. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. I think it's also maybe the North South thing. You know, people little, people little more brash up north. People little more uh, what can I say? Expressive. This is, this is going on tape. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, hopefully my viewers are not in Delhi. <laughs> They're all in Bangalore. Hate oh, kya ho raha hai? No, but no, I'm. I'm no, 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 but, but no, no, but you're right. No, I, but we've dissected this on the show before. Yes, uh, but but it's true. I agree with you. There completely. is a cultural difference. There is right? a cultural difference. Uh, I think I think it's I think the difference mostly, and I'm not trying to, and I try this, try hard, not not only to not get in trouble. In general, I try to uh, uh, appreciate the fact that 
north and south very different cultures very much as in they are uh, what can i say a more outspoken yes lot in general yes lot more outspoken yes. uh, to each other also yes. and uh, they they not too tactful in communication <laughs> they not tact that's that's a nice word to you use you know what yeah. i'm saying whereas i think down south uh, i think maybe culturally i don't know why i, I haven't figured out why mm. we are taught from a young age to not be blunt in what we right. say right we right. always taught to be a little more tactful in our uh, communication skills uh, our expressions right you know so i think that is possibly why uh, if you are someone who is a little more uh, softer <laughs> yeah right yeah. it's it's difficult to survive uh, uh, north of india because the culture is a little more aggressive you know and that was one of bold and in your face yeah, i think in your face in, in your word. face in yeah your face. that's yeah. one of the reasons why i left because i i couldn't handle it actually right. because right. that too coming from brunei which is a very gentle place right. then going to singapore which was so exciting for me because you had all these big big skyscrapers and you know everything was so fast yeah, yeah, you had yeah. so many things and all that and then coming from australia where i mean in at the time that i was there people i felt were very friendly and very right, nice right right and then when i arrived i mean when i landed in delhi from there i was like where am i must have been a it was a it was a culture shock complete culture shock cuz i have never lived in india before was it the first like indian came, city you lived in was delhi yes i had never lived in india before we used to come back on leave like when my mom and dad were teaching in the school we used to come back on leave so we used to go back on leave uh, you know um, to visit relatives and all that so that was my taste of india okay we hardly went up north we were mostly in the south right. and i just used to have a blast playing with my cousins and being pampered by uncles and aunties and all that's that. a different experience that's a different experience because you're visiting you're not living there so my first time living in india proper was when i finished my degree from perth and i came to delhi and it, yeah it was a, a really imagine. great culture shock you know me. i i'm technically well i didn't <laughs> do my entire growing up in chennai but right. i'm born and i'm from chennai and i spent before bangalore the most uh, most amount of time in chennai in an indian city um even coming from chennai i felt bangalore was soft Okay. So people are a little more aggressive in Chennai. Right. It's also hotter climate. It so is. People are generally a little more irritated. Crabby, you know? <laughs> in general, people are a little more crabby. Right. And it's I, not like people are impolite and rude. But no, no. I, I but I think uh, when I was younger, I was a complete mongrel myself. You know, <laughs> getting in the scraps with auto guys and you know, yelling on the road, riding a bike, you know, trying to pick up fights with some car guy. Even I. from chennai when i moved to bangalore i found bangalore a lot more palatable in that sense I, yeah more, yeah i can understand that you know, like here when people fight on the road they just yell for 2 minutes and walk and out, the, you know? in chennai the chances of physicality are higher okay. in delhi i think it's certain you know 100% <laughs> that's the difference <laughs> yeah you know? yeah here people just you know get angry come to one point of conflict and just go their own ways <laughs> yeah, realizing yeah. the futility of yes, it yes right? yes yes so even i do i come from even further from down south, south yes in general i think uh, bangalore is uh, a good place if you are looking for uh, mostly conflict free uh, conflict <laughs> free living you know yeah uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so i was i was uh, interested in that i i couldn't i really couldn't handle it and yeah. you came here and started teaching music and i came and started teaching okay yeah. okay and uh, i mean i was teaching there too yeah and but i started teaching uh, and started teaching here, here as well in bangalore yeah and um, what's Yeah so how's that like how's your uh, what can i say your musical journey like you teach music um you've been teaching music for for a very long time very long but you're also a musician you're also performing yes. performing so artist so my uh, concert pianist career started 10 years after i started teaching and uh, so i've been i i've traveled a bit uh, giving concerts and stuff like that now i i'm not very sure about it now because i'm older now and uh, the learning curve uh, has not been so encouraging okay. besides there are other factors that are probably weighing on my mind i'm not sure mm. that are not conducive to a productive practice session i guess as it used to be before okay so i'm i'm thinking about you know whether it's wise to do concerts now okay. or it might take a long time but uh, i you're saying in the perspective of covid or no no, no generally no. like me or oh, you, you your decision your my, personal my, choice yes. okay but along the way i discovered music theater okay and 
immediately music theater and i just hit it off completely when you say music theater you mean musicals ah singing uh, and acting oh you yes. mean uh, yeah you know uh, i can call you nisha right? yes of course, of course. <laughs> um i was just about when you were telling me about the whole thing about uh, you know um, no, no, a few a while ago we were talking about patronage and we were talking mm. about the money the mm. brands and all mm. of that mm. i had a similar chat of another artist theater artist okay uh, a girl that i worked with she was full time she's an architect uh, who gave up uh, a job in to go to go into full time theater during covid oh she was really passionate about wow. acting and so she's doing that and i and i was trying to have uh, her perspective about you know because a young person 25 year old today giving up a full time job to go into full time theater that's right there the money music if let's say is less it zero is it was in theater yeah that's right and i was you we talking about theater industry because they also uh, struggling from patron, uh, lack of patron that's right not enough people that's right please. that's right and we were chatting about that and i was thinking why can't it would be so nice if if the music world could connect with the Absolutely. theater world yeah, it yeah. might make more sense yeah, and yeah. you're talking exactly about that yeah so um so that comes very easily to me doing uh, music theater songs so i performed uh, music theater as well and it's like you know it's like um, how do i say i belong in that okay. you know it's it's very okay. easy for me yeah, uh, you look uh, you look like somebody who's uh, who can be expressive yeah animated. oh very much very much yeah, yeah. so you know so that uh, came my way and ever since i was uh, i think 11 or 12 years old i always wanted to be a rock chick also <laughs> so that dream finally happened in 2016 okay you may or may not have heard like i released my alternative rock album of course in 2017. i did of course i did yeah so that was that was a long held dream which finally happened i never gave up on it but i was wondering like how where what when i could remember you could you put up uh, posters and i remember it was nominated for certain things yes yes, yes and yes i remember your posts from back then uh, 2017 so that process is still going on i'm actually waiting for a new track to uh, so what uh, happened with that album You released the album. I released the album, and but you got nominated. I, I did it on my own. There's what no. What is your self-release? Okay. No you label. No, I, I told you no. If I have, a, <laughs> I will reach there no matter what. Okay. I okay. will reach there nice, no matter nice, what. Nice. I will not allow any hurdles to nice, get in my nice, way. Like I'm, nice. I'm extremely driven that way. Lovely. So it was self, uh, self-produced uh, and released self, album. Yes. Okay. So. Oh, of course it hasn't done as well as i've hoped but fortunately some of the songs from there have got uh, award recognition nomination wow. plus wow. award so this is uh, rock music yeah alternative rock alternative you so you've released an alt i somehow assumed in my blind spot or whatever i've know of you that it's you said rock i thought maybe it's a fusion it was a classical rock or something so that's a, a, my complete alter ego this one oh. if you've seen pictures of the majoli project yeah 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 i have i have very radical yeah yeah, yeah, quite yeah radical, so, quite so that's edgy. that's the that's the other yeah. other half wow <laughs> so that was a proper alternative rock album yes yes uh, but i think i think uh, it probably has not done well because alternative rock itself i mean the the golden era of alternative rock and yeah but you, you know i don't care 90s yeah i don't no, care because saying, i love it yeah, i love alternative because, because i grew up on yeah on. because when i write whatever comes out comes out right. i can't kind of tailor it to you know suit the popular taste or whatever it is that's you know because i i write at my piano right so something a nice melody comes and a lot of the songs on the album are just piano and voice okay but very and who wrote the song me you wrote the song i wrote nice. all of them nice nice so you wrote the music and the song yes and you sung and performed yes so it's wait wait it's just a piano and you or is it no the piano and voice i've performed okay, okay. but, but the are... other stuff i okay, haven't okay. i was looking for an outfit to to actually do that Collaborate but with you. but have not been successful on that front okay yeah okay. I I am not giving up on that. Right. But I'm getting older my bones are getting stiffer so I hope I can get to do Have this you before those? I kind of like <laughs> after once I'm like okay I'm tired now. <laughs> 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 so have you performed that album? Uh, no, not, not the not entire yet. album. Not the entire not album. Okay. album. There's a few pieces here and there. Yes. But you haven't done an album specific concert no, for that. No, 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 okay. no. And there's yeah. still hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think, I think. First, I have to lose about 15 kgs. Then we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adele managed. Adele yeah. has really. Uh, she was. A, she was but a I, girl. you know what? I love. But I like now. the chubby Adele. You know, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I think that's her personality. I'm happy for her, but somehow having yeah, lost that weight. Yeah, yeah, it it doesn't. 
it's not the same you know it's i don't like, like her for a voice but somehow yeah. i prefer the chubby the chubby adele yes yeah. same here yeah. Yeah. somehow it i feel that that is her personality yes you know i i think uh, yeah i think her true self was her chubby self yes. you know yes uh, but maybe hopefully she's happier having lost the weight hopefully hopefully, Who hopefully she's healthier and happier for it <laughs> her voice is still the same yeah um, what was i i, I was on I, i think i interrupted you while you were, you were talking about <laughs> about something. performing the album ha ah, um so what has been your musical experience um, it must be uh, very varied <laughs> teach ah uh, sorry uh, this is the question i wanted to ask you you're also a performer that's where we were starting yes. you're also a teacher yes how do you manage the both because uh, when you're teaching you are working with and especially kids uh, i'm sure it's uh, sweet but it's also very challenging and frustrating and i'm sure at least half your students uh, are not gifted which is average i'm saying not mm. when i say gifted i mean they're yeah. not most of them will not go up to be professional musicians right you will know i'm sure by the third fourth fifth class right that okay this kid no i i don't take on uh, students believing that they will be professional musicians okay you see okay. uh because they should have a chance to learn music but they need to have some amount of talent so that right. we can actually do something and they right. can actually get something out of so it so you identify talent and try to nurture it yeah so basically i have an audition process So first we have to figure out whether right. they are musical or not to start with right. what their interest level is. So not all of them are going to be professional musicians. Some have gone on to become professionals which right. is great. Right. And they are in other parts of the world I as well. I did your audition in just you, I was auditioned as well. <laughs> After a few months of waiting I was auditioned by you and I was so nervous I was so hot cuz I had back then and today I yes. have no knowledge of uh, classical music whatsoever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah i was quite uh, i was so happy when you said ah, okay i can start coming class from next week and then they did as i passed yes wow <laughs> so besides the teaching and the uh, as i said the performance things are l- like zero right now right. i don't mind it because i need time to kind of recalibrate i think as far as that is concerned but i'm very happy when i'm teaching some of my students may not feel so but <laughs> <laughs> but i'm very happy when i'm teaching and you i also enjoy write teaching, as i much as i like enjoy it very much right. i enjoy it very otherwise much otherwise it can be very frustrating for a professional mm. uh, uh, what can i say um high caliber is not uh, that's the word but uh, i mean somebody a passionate true musician mm. right it must teaching must be i would presume it must be harder because it you're working with people of a highly inferior level right yeah but I think the exciting thing about teaching is okay now they are at this level where can they get to right you know because I kind of I I I am pretty good with foreseeing where they will be at a certain point of time okay okay and usually it works okay as it okay, okay if you do this if you do this you can get that far so I enjoy that okay. challenge okay. and I enjoy that vision right and when they actually do it it's so satisfying very satisfied it's it's something i cannot explain right so now. then this 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 there's the composing as well one more cup of tea no i am not done okay. <laughs> i need your warm cup no you. no problem okay so okay. you know there's also the composing as well and also i mean when i put up concerts i should direct the orchestra and the choir as well i've had choirs under me right now i i have one choir where we'll be probably taking a break this is femusica i don't okay. know whether you heard about no, us no, so no. it's an all women choir Okay. And well, what's it called again? Fem musica. Fem musica. F E M U S I K. Oh, fem musica. Okay, female music. So fem musica. Okay. 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 So we debuted in September 2019. Mm-hmm. We were all ready to start our work for the next concert, and then coronavirus happened. Okay. But we had a live performance last year. Okay. Last November. Okay. Finally. Okay. Finally. Okay. So After the second wave opened up. Ah uh, yes. Lockdown opened up. So it's an all women choir, and we do music by only female composers. Okay. Okay. So which was a nice eye opener for me because I like oh there's so much oh there's so much because usually people don't do this yeah cuz I just realized I can't think of a single female composer all so the composers thought, even I know and ignore amus so, like so me so I male. thought it was my job to introduce the audience to it right right and who are the prominent female composers uh right now and these are all people from the same era or uh, no, no, contemporary no 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 contemporary oh contemporary contemporary no 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 they are also but the problem is the culture i'll tell you the story so mendelssohn remember who my mentioned earlier yes you mentioned so he had a sister 
Her name was Fanny Mendelssohn. She was equally as talented or probably more talented than him. But it was a time where if women wrote anything, they were not taken seriously. Okay. So even in literature, okay. you've had ladies write books, but under right. the pen under name the of a man. So this happened with Fanny Mendelssohn also. A lot of her works were published under her brother's name. Oh. Now we know that she has written some beautiful pieces of music now we know it's actually her so some of the uh, music that you think is Mendelssohn uh, yes, is actually, it's actually Fanny Mendelssohn yes oh. now all these things are coming out so this was happening with her but there were these ladies who really took you know a courageous step and brave step and like I don't care what you think about you know us women uh, writing, you know, writing stuff and all that I will write you know but very few because of the culture at that time it was right. very difficult right you right. know right. so now we know that there were these pockets of and 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 even a nun we are talking about the middle ages hildegard of bingen uh, she was a very very interesting person she used to have visions she used to pray on her own her life is very interesting and she produced this beautiful plain chant that people still perform today Plain chant. Yes, it's a chant. The, uh, that's that's the Christian chant where you it's only centered around a few notes and it's sacred, of course, uh, and based on Latin text. She wrote so many of those. It's been recorded by wonderful groups all over the world. So you had people like right. this, and right. you know because I but was doing at my that research. Time could not yes, uh, come to the forefront. That's because right. Of the that's bias right. that so, society had. So I thought, no, 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 no. We're, no, 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 this is not happening. No, no, no. I'm going to introduce. So we have done works by the earlier lady composers right. as well as the contemporary lady composers. Right. So and right. the audience, they were like, "Wow, we didn't know this existed." I said, "That is precisely my point." Right, right, you know, right. And how has the uh, reception been in general? Whenever you've had concerts, uh, do you get audiences? Uh, yes. Uh, are they are they uh, like packed crowds? Are they okay audiences? Depends. 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 Sometimes we have standing crowd right. sometimes very few people i don't know why right. <laughs> so it's been all very uh, it's been uh, it okay. fluctuates well, the reason i ask is mm. i think uh, even in for theater mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. discussion as having with the other guests and people in general from theater um i've seen at least when i was growing up and i was in chennai till i was in my early 20s right Theatre was uh, theatre used to get. Uh, I mean, you can't make money. But no. You put up a play, people come and watch. Come and watch. They come and watch, and, and especially in uh, December, uh, Chennai has that Kacheri yes, season. Yes, right? yes, yes. Indian that's right. classical that music, music academy. Season. Yes. You cannot get a ticket unless you yes. know someone in the academy. Right. <laughs> or you book tickets in advance. Right. You cannot get a ticket for some other shows. Right. Especially if the uh, more prominent names in Indian classical music are performing. Right. Those shows already they have a fixed audience of about thousand people. Oh. Of which I'm saying. Uh, if you're a renowned name in that uh, Indian classical music scene, you know at least 300, 300 of them will land up at your show. Right. That's why most shows uh, perform to packed audiences. Right. Because though it's a small audience, yes. you have the diehard uh, yes, fan base. Yes, that's right. Of which at least one third would 100% land up at any performing yeah, right, show. Right, right, right. Is there a similar or was there a similar fan base or is there something? I think there was actually because, uh, see, Bangalore School of Music has been around for a long time and they have like their diehard, uh, you know, members okay. who come for almost every single concert of this. Right. Uh, we probably have that kind of thing, but a smaller one because we've not been around for mm, that long. Right. And pro possibly we have not produced concerts on a scale that the Bangalore School of Music uh, has been because they, theirs was very frequent. Okay. We've okay. not been able to do oh, that. Bangalore School of Music uh, because by the virtue of being around for a longer time. Longer time okay. and also uh, their ability to present concerts at very regular intervals. We've not been able to do that. I because think that's of one of the things. Like I'm sure, I'm very certain, mm. I don't know how good the audience profile might eventually be but mm. let's say Bangalore being uh, such a uh, what can I say, a bustling city mm -hmm. today with so many people and really Bangalore doesn't have too much to offer in terms of entertainment. <laughs> right? But if I was a young guy or if I was even a, not a, such a young guy and if I heard of this, that there are these concerts that happen mm. on a regular basis, mm. Mm. I might be encouraged to go to one or two. Yes, just right? to have a look. Yeah. What happens, you know, what mm. happens mm. in these places? What is this? Um, but yeah, I think 
because there aren't so many regular uh, performances that's right it's difficult to build a taste yes. with people that's right for this art form that's right, right that's right because the only way i think you'll be able to build more and more a bigger audience yes. is if more and more people are curious absolutely and of that 100 curious people 50 might bother to come and of the 50 you might uh, retain 10 right as hey, you know what this is something i enjoy correct. i'd love to go for another show correct correct right um is there a way to i mean but why why aren't sorry stupid questions <laughs> silly silly stupid questions for the things you thought about financial constraints uh staff constraints right because we are very small we are okay. very small i just uh, you know just i'm not pertaining only mm, to your outfit i'm mm, saying in general the, the music in, scene in general i think um i am not see first of all if we want to have a foreign artist come you have to take care of their fs their stay their whatever and unless you get good spot the big ticket the big ticket names okay to really draw that crowd okay. yeah so okay. with what you have you won't be able to manage right, you will need to right, get sponsorship right. sometimes you are lucky sometimes you're not lucky i think clients look at only one thing all these uh, brands no, for sponsor, them yeah how many people will come that's right that's how right how many eyeballs will i get that's right and it's, it's like what do i get out of what it what do i get out yeah. of it yeah you know? so it's very very difficult yeah. actually and it's uh i think it's easier to get uh sponsorship for daler mehndi or amika singh <laughs> absolutely or sonu nigam because you know that <laughs> they are ready to throw money <laughs> the for audience, that the audience uh yeah. capacity will be met. yes yes you and know, they are ready know. to throw money for that but right, yeah. when you come to them and they said you know we're having a beautiful concert of such and such and such and we just need 20000 rupees and they'll be looking like they'll be wanting to cut from there oh my god no it has happened to me okay. personally i'm like <laughs> 20000 is nothing for yeah. you and uh, <laughs> yeah it's also insulting when people don't in a sense uh, value the performance that's right right that's Which right technically is is, is intangible it's yeah. really hard to put that's a value right. on a performance that's right it's really hard to say how it uh, affects people right i'm sure i'm sure uh, i've really haven't been to a proper western classical <laughs> music but i'm assuming that when i see these shows on youtube right people right. go and sit and right. watch these things i'm right. sure it must be a, a moving experience right to see these yes. musicians of really high caliber right. trained years yes yes you know to perform a piece it must be some kind of a transformative experience no i'm, I'm yeah cuz i have been to concerts like that and you like at the end of it <laughs> and you must sometimes have also sometimes in tears also you must have also performed uh, uh, outside of india as well right? i have i have not too much but something uh, it's been a nice experience right and and the reception must have been a lot different from our culture because people also i think there are <laughs> a little bit music, right <laughs> yeah is that part of why um, is but you're saying that there are more and more people learning western classical music they are they are in they are they are they are but what do they do like uh these are hobby musicians a hobby musicians okay okay so not then, not to you know kind of take it to a professional level su- as such but right. something that they like and they want to you know kind of do on the side right. yeah um among the many many students uh, you probably taught over the years but sorry the other question you're a pianist but you're also a vocalist are you a yes. vocalist who can play the piano or a pianist who can sing pianist who can sing okay okay so that's that's <laughs> your core prof- Sorry for that uh, no, interruption no <laughs> in the program. No worries. So your influence in Western classical music, uh, I assumed uh, before we had this chat, is very Christian. You know, because no, not at, Nisya Majoli, not at all. Western classical not music. Not at all. I, I assumed there was a church background. Not at all. Not at all. Though the family is Christian, but that had nothing to do with the music education at all. Because as I mentioned, my father was playing these Western classical. Uh, this one, it was not church music. Right. It, it was, was. Uh, concertos. It was orchestral music. It was piano music. It was harpsichord music. It was piano violin music. So they had that had no connection at all with church. at all in fact the music that they played in church in brunei was more of a popular nature right right you did not have choirs that were singing western classical hymns right this is more like hill song and and, and no 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 that is more of the gospel right. these are like hymns that you have in the hymn book where you know the melody is something where the congregation can sing along to okay you know okay, that kind okay. of thing very like what like they sing at marriages and no not marriages uh, yeah. something, yeah. like, marriages, that. Right? something yeah. like that something like that so that 
culture of music in the church in brunei was not like what we discussed uh, what chennai is doing okay. so there was no connection between music happening in church and the music happening at home absolutely none whatsoever okay but the uh, which is why um, you you mentioned to me that you're a buddhist you were exchanging <laughs> about the food thing i asked you if you're a vegetarian or non vegetarian because of dinner <laughs> and i was quite surprised i assume in fact i was telling mandira mandira is a vegetarian okay <laughs> she she's a pure vegetarian and i was saying no, no, because of your christian name right. the fact that you're a western classical you know, musician right. uh, i just assumed you're christian and most christians uh, eat non veg food right right so uh, buddhism just happened uh, obviously happened it could you must have adopted it actually it. i adopted it actually january of last year what are you saying like yeah. 2021 yeah <laughs> because uh, I understood that there were many many things happening in my life and uh, a lot of direction was pointing me to that. And then I understood okay this is my path. So that's when I adopted it. Were you um, a, a practicing Christian or just a Christian I by name? I was a practicing Catholic in my uh, childhood of course because family used to go to church so you tag right, along. Right. But uh, that kind of stopped uh, maybe about 10 to 11 years later. So for uh, most of your adult life, you've not really been uh, no, a religious person. No, I haven't been. No, right, I haven't right, been. Right. No. So, so I used to read a lot uh, and all this. And as I mentioned, there were many things that were pointing me or guiding me in this direction. And I finally decided that this was for me. Okay. And I really, in spiritually, I couldn't be happier. Okay. The reason yeah. I oh, I was <laughs> surprised and pleasantly <laughs> surprised also because for a brief uh, phase in my life. It was the phase I met you also, because Timmy was right. a church friend. Right. I'm from a Hindu family. Right. But for about ten years, I was a hardcore practicing, believing Christian. I see. You know, uh, but then a lot of things happened in life. Life happened, and you know, <laughs> uh, a lot of experiences. Um, I'm not a Christian uh, practicing or right. otherwise today. Right. Though I have huge regards for the teachings of Christ. Right. I, I, th- I think uh, I think uh, Jesus was. Uh, he was a dude. He was absolutely. <laughs> That's yeah, the word. Yeah. The guy was a dude. He was a know? dude. <laughs> he must have been a maniac in his back in his yes. time. But the guy is a dude. Yes. No But uh, the last few years, three four years ago, um, purely by chance or maybe uh, in a curious investigation, I've been also uh, learning about not learning. Okay, uh, inve- finally getting little deeper into spirituality or at least trying to understand certain concepts. And in many ways, Buddhism is far ahead. Mm. In fact, I am. See, back in the day, a lot of people say, "No, no, Buddha, uh, Jesus' house was inspired by Buddha." And I said, "No, what nonsense! <laughs> what rubbish! How dare you? Jesus was not inspired by anybody. He knew. You know, that's what I. That's how I used to be when I was a Christian, right? <laughs> But now that I'm no longer a Christian and I'm able to uh, look at things a little more objectively, uh, I feel like." I'm sure a guy like Jesus. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, discredit him. He must have been because Buddha came uh, much uh, earlier. much earlier, right? And uh, if you really notice, there's a lot of parallels and a lot Very of much. commonality. Very much. Very much. Except I think maybe by by coincidence or maybe uh, it happened over time. Christianity is much better packaged. Oh yes, as a religion. <laughs> yes, <know>? yes. <laughs> especially, yeah. I don't know about how the Catholic Church did back in the day. Right. The history has some very, uh, you know, cruel tales. Yes, yes, yes. The yes. priests really, you know, usurping power. Yes, you know? yes, that's right. Uh, but over time, mm. uh, from a genuine perspective of spirituality, well, I think Buddhism is uh, way ahead. The only close to Buddhism, I would think, is Jainism. From whatever I've read. Right. Uh, uh, the basic, basic fundamentals right. i don't know the depth of either right. okay but basic fundamentals if you look at it uh from a pure spiritual understanding or awakening perspective buddhism and jainism are probably uh, ahead and probably mm. at the cutting edge of understanding outside of indian spiritual right. understanding right. and right. i think that is also connected mm. but uh, I think Christianity is just much better packaged. Packaged. It's that's that's the people, right way of easier put, people no, to comprehend. Yeah, that's a right? good way of putting it. Yeah, no? no, very true actually. Buddhism is not easy to understand and follow. It's not easy at all. But you the irony is, it's, it's <laughs> super simple actually. I think uh, what uh, makes but, it. But uh, I, I think see the thing is, a lot of people, they want someone to rely on. All of us. You know. Right. So they cannot un, uh, perhaps. uh swallow the fact that there are things that you can do yourself you kind of 
rely on okay there is someone up there i can tell all my troubles i can do my prayers i can whatever whatever he or whatever will help me right but what buddhism it is not like that it's it's you it's you right and atma that, that is, atman that is difficult it is difficult to rely on yourself is very difficult actually one of the first <laughs> things that uh, even today i i wish i could go back to believing mm. in jesus right. or you know forget not that i believe in any other god today right but i wish i could go back to the idea of believing in a god right right because it's very comforting that is the right it's word so yes so comforting yes. because when yes. you're in trouble no yeah, whatever yeah. god you believe in <laughs> yes. if you truly believe that god right. is looking out right. for you if right. you truly believe that right. help is on the way right it's so soothing you feel yeah you feel that uh, yes you feel i understand hope. that I understand that. You feel like there is there is someone looking out for yes. you like you mentioned that's right? right that's right. And I think it's especially more powerful when someone you love is dying or has died. Yes, right. You know because all religions yes give you the belief especially Christianity yes. more than any other religion that they are not gone that you will meet them again. Right. That there is a meeting that will happen after this life is done. Uh, yes, right? right. And that again you find so much comfort, comfort right? right? I think the problem in Buddhism is it's too logical. <laughs> It's too true. It's very logical. It's too yes. true. <laughs> yes. You know, I think, it, I think most probably, and my my deduction is probably the truth, because it's just so boring. <laughs> yeah. It's so unpalatable. I get that. I get that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There are no <laughs> solutions. You know, any question is it's all there. It's all there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But what about this problem? There is no problem. <laughs> what is the problem? No, but my problem. It's all there. It's all there. <laughs> that's you know? true so i think th- i think people like to be uh, a people like to be reassured yes you know, that there yes. is there is a, because most of us uh, uh, we find ourselves uh, various times in life we feel so alone in our problems very true you know very true um, and it's you just want to believe that there is an entity out yes. there that you can placate right. or because there are times in my life when i i believed and uh, maybe it's a coincidence that i have prayed for something to some god jesus or even before that and something happens happens mm. you know and you feel so happy right that your answer was for your prayer was answered, answered right, right right but uh, that's missing in uh, a highly evolved religion right, or right. more than a religion a teaching or i don't know what yeah, a path a path yeah like like mm. buddhism right that's so true. what how did you like what brought you to the understanding that it's it's just a i think a story of so many years um you know things incidents how did you that under, how did you uh, uh, find out about buddhism in the first place was it you going out and finding out or um, no i'm sorry i'm not getting to personal i just just curious no worries because it. again brunei where i was born and brought up uh there's a lot there's a huge chinese population oh. so by default okay. so you, had, you get introduced to right. their way right. though right. I actually they believe more in Confucianism rather than okay. Buddhism, but okay. there are Buddhist elements there so also. So you had some so, yeah, knowledge, exa- some interaction. Exa- exactly. Yeah. Yes. I, I grew right. up in Saudi Arabia, good number ah, of years of my life. Okay. So there was a lot of Islamic influence in my life. Ah, as well. right, right. So I have gone to mosques and I have prayed. Right. And I have tried to understand the right. Islamic faith. Right, right, right. But there was no connect. Somehow I couldn't connect. Couldn't connect with it. Uh, yes. And then I was agnostic, skeptic, atheist for a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then christianity happened right and again i cannot i cannot emphasize how beautifully packaged right uh, as a product or as, right. as a belief system right it's um, and i think what makes i think also in reality what makes uh, like music parallel mm. like beethoven and chopin mm. might have created or written music in mm. probably its purest form mm. right um, and I'm sure you cannot say the, the same uh, about the quality of music of Yar Rahman. While it is mm. beautiful and it mm. is mm. universally mm. enjoyable, mm. I think that is the difference between Christianity and Buddhism. <laughs> I would compare Christianity to Yar Rahman, which is enjoyable and of course it has quality. Yes. Of course it has depth. Yes. Of course there's talent. Yes. And of course there is uh, skill. Mm. You know. Um, but it is popular music it is that popular music to a wide that's number of right. people that's right? right that's right and it, if you ask any uh, uh, true musician mm. who's uh, uh, studied the art form like mm. you and i'm sure others like you obviously i'm sure <laughs> compared to a chopin or a, or a beethoven uh, yeah it's it's a totally different it's a total uh, i don't yeah you can't even compare you, right yeah <laughs> uh, but it's hard for people 
uh, or bigger number yes, of people that's right bigger number of people to right, appreciate right. yeah but often, that's a very nice comparison very you know, nice uh, <laughs> I, i'm thinking i'm thinking about it yeah 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 but yeah but um, what can i say uh, i i think any classical music any mm. city uh, the only way it can thrive culturally mm. is if there is enough patronage of the classical arts 100% you know? but that becomes difficult uh, as we move towards i don't know uh, i don't know why if it is the hustle and bustle of the cities or if it's uh, because of technology or what but if technology is any way for technology to help bring you think bring back people to understand or even be curious about because if you look at music today like right. I, i'm sure you listen to me you're a musician yes you? yes it sounds horrible to me see your i have teen students right who come to me for vocal lessons even they don't like the music nowadays <laughs> yeah I, because sometimes you know like i give them stuff to work on and all that and we talk about tone we talk about all kinds of technical issues and style issues and all that and then sometimes you know i give them the free reign i said okay what are you listening to nowadays w- would you like to do something that you like and they'll be like it's like uh yes like oh, nothing much i think it's true i think and the last yeah. and they say everything sounds the same yeah it is there's nothing memorable everything sounds yeah. the same i'm talking about like the proper popular proper big pop hits absolutely you know? because then and they they are not enamored with it either I, and they but they love people like adele they love pe- they love people like beyonce right. they love people right. like alicia keys Who are because very they are very, they are very yeah, talented but otherwise the run of the mill they like they like what I, I, there's nothing that i like they say you know and in fact the some of the songs that i give them which are way older they love those i'm like <laughs> so there's enough bright young kids getting into very the art very much very much so the next last time i've been at it for a while no no problem i'm going to ask you one more uh, <laughs> uh, why is there not enough and i and i really think about this when i see if there's any way that i can contribute uh, uh, to to the city bangalore does not really have a, a big independent music scene as in original music yes, coming that, out of bangalore that is also right? true apart, apart from kannada cinema mm. uh, which is the in local industry mm. and even kannada cinema is not while there you do have a few hits uh, uh, once in a while uh, unlike tamil or hindi it uh, it's not a hugely flourishing uh, mm. industry while there are some bright sparks and right. good musicians and some very good singers right. and of course bangalore has no dearth of a uh, good guitarist yes. and, and of course pianist mm. and all basses and mm. all of that but compared to a chennai or a bombay the amount of uh, original uh, independent music is i think is not uh, even if it's rap even if it's uh, even if it's a uh, pop right not necessarily western classical yeah. music there's not enough independent uh, original artists coming out of bangalore is that in only in my head or is it true? i think uh, there are actually a lot of artists who are like sitting in the corners and writing a lot of stuff but probably are not encouraged to bring it out uh, because first of all i think the big issue here is the backing of record labels right to help out a musician because now everything is you have spotify you have so many yeah, online yeah. things right. and these online things actually don't help okay i, I mean musicians that okay. is okay. because see in my day you had this big record label yeah, and you yeah. had fabulous bands and all that who yeah. days to market this to Correct. tour and Correct. it was a different thing altogether you used to go buy lps used to go buy cds yes. used to buy yes. you'll run to the store it's like oh my god the latest album is yeah. out you know it yeah. was a different yeah. experience you yeah. know it was Absolutely. more hands on and i personally feel now that everything has gone digital somehow that same feel is not there and because everything is you know you have spotify you have uh, amazon iTunes. or whatever it iTunes. is uh, now it's like so many artists are trying to market themselves on this that it's very difficult to kind of you know yeah, you know I what i mean right yeah. like sort of and maybe for independent musicians they might feel i'm going to get lost in all this no they are who they will are, listen are, to my music are. i just have no, not even a buyer yeah. for for my album well i, I you know my perspective is both ways one right. is you're absolutely right mm. uh, uh it was 
so much easier for an artist when a record label just comes on that's sees right. talent that's right. promotes them makes posters that's right. and that's create, right. uh, you know, produces concerts right. and you know puts them on tv interviews that's right and make sure the song is on radio that's right, right? all you as an artist have to do exactly uh, is you know create the music that sells that's uh, right but the problem there also was i think like uh, the uh, beethoven's predecessor <laughs> The record labels also many times uh, decide what, what? music. That's and of course, true. a lot of That's artists true. who said no, we yes. don't do our thing, and luckily for them, their music was a big hit. Like whether right. it was Queen, right, or whether it was uh, even the Beatles, right, they refused to change their sound because this one it became huge, That's hugely right. popular. That's right. Uh, uh, Today's musicians uh, don't most most people don't have the comfort of big rec- uh, record labels, especially in India, coming for you because. record labels are dying because their yes. way of uh, marketing is, their way of making yes. money is now is, is historic now, yeah exactly Especially after digital exactly. Uh, their revenue streams have come down that's right um but i also think today thanks to technology mm. and uh, um, uh, social media mm. and, and youtube mm. like how this uh, i don't know how many people are going to watch it <laughs> right it uh, doesn't, doesn't cost me much yes um, and it's a fun experience for yes. us but there is always the possibility um if the content is good right it might get an audience and it might there is a chance it might maybe not uh, this show per se <laughs> uh but something as attractive as music right, right? there sometimes uh, tracks that become huge hits right um on youtube mm. or on or uh, what is it, instagram and all of that right um maybe if the western classical or music community could leverage a lot more mm. um on using these platforms platforms mm. maybe maybe if there's a little more effective use of mm. platforms mm. because today what artists do have mm. uh, anybody has mm. is the ability to put your music out there right like you that's you had true. the passion yeah. you had the interest mm. you just used your energy and your money and your resources and you made an album and the problem is it's one thing that's stuck in a a uh, huge sea of because i i don't know nisha majoli right. so i have no reason to search for your music that's right. and listen to your that's track right. or that's i don't right. even know where to i don't even know if it's available on itunes that's or spotify that's right 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 so i think because musicians are not also good marketing people <laughs> yeah. right um yeah there has to be some way that um, you can leverage on people who pick back on people who understand today's communication uh, opportunities and help artists sort of believe me i've had mails like that but we will do ground. this we will do this we will do this however you will need to pay us this i can imagine yeah yeah i'm yeah. like who are you trying to i mean i i may right. i'm not stupid i think it works if it's a revenue <laughs> sharing i think it will work if it's revenue sharing they can promise you yeah. if someone comes along and says you know what i can help you Uh, uh do this or i can get yeah. to get this audience but then or, you know you make a background check of all these people and then right. you understand that they are all scams yeah and That's the problem is what i get a little upset about is see there are so many people trying to put their music out there yeah. there are some fabulous musicians who people don't even know of and you know when they see something like this you know they get excited oh someone's going to help me and then they get scammed yeah and yeah, then they, and then so they'll, they'll get times. scammed again so and times. again and then yeah. find is like no i i can't do this anymore you know it's it's i feel bad you know that this happens to musicians who really want to put their stuff out there right 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 and you know when you have a mail like that you're like oh my goodness my music is going to be heard you know right, you right, get so right, excited right, right. and then at the end you find out that they've conned you like it must be horrible especially in someone who has so much hope especially exactly. an artist exactly you know you they'll conned. be in their garage or in the bedroom and they would have done a fantastic trash like oh my goodness you know someone's going to hear this right. and then when this happens yeah yeah you know yeah. so I, i don't know really the the the, the the best solution to this yeah, really yeah but do you see uh, western classical music ever thriving uh, uh, or is it something that you think maybe is is not it can't be something that's past its due date no because absolutely it not has to be valid because like i asked uh, the question i'm trying to pose to you right. maybe it's a philosophical one <laughs> uh, i was asking this girl harshini who's a theater artist talking to you about i said you know today I have movies, mm. right? I have Netflix. Mm. Forget theaters. Mm. Forget, I have Netflix, Amazon. I don't even have time to watch the stuff that's available. That's right. Now, why should I mm. come to watch a play? Right? 
and some Some of of the the plays plays. are nonsense because they're done right. by amateur, some of right. The plays, right? Right. And if I, I by mistake have gone to one of those amateur plays and wasted my money, time that's right. Sitting through a boring one and a half hours of my right. of my life, I'm not going to go back to another play. True, right? Uh, so she had, uh, she said, yeah, it's true. But if you go to a play that's well done by a good director, and I was, I went to her play. It was very good. That's how I know that girl. I went to a very good play. Lovely director, craft. You can see the skill. You can see. You can. And she said, you know, when you come to a good play, mm-hmm. it's not. It's part of. It's an experience. That, yes. That cannot be uh, matched by a movie. You know, uh, it's a live experience that you cannot uh, compare to. Uh, yes. You know, uh, and you cannot explain it until you experience it. She is right? absolutely right. So, to my so my thing was then you somehow uh, the objective of the people in theatre mm. then should be somehow to a make sure the quality of performances is consistently yes. good. Yes. Yes. And somehow become marketing savvy and right. ensure that people know. You know what? Right. This con that concerts happen. Like, A lot of times, plays happen. Nobody knows that this right. play is happening at this place because the communication uh, skills mm. of the performers mm. or the theatre people mm. is not good enough. They don't know how to promote right. their pro- right. their production. Right. right? So the question is, uh, finally, I think we're going to jump on the light. Gobbles, gobbles, gobbles. I, oh. oh, come here. <laughs> What a tail! Wow. She is one proper tail. So. Maybe, perhaps, I'm just uh, giving you uh, off the cuff mm, random mm, ideas mm. because giving ideas is free; mm. <laughs> uh, doesn't cost any money. Uh, perhaps the people. I think the only way uh, any industry, right, mm. and I suppose music industry mm. also, can really move forward and progress is, I think, it comes together. I think the people involved come mm. together and figure out how to At- attract, attract people all over again. Because today, with so much music and entertainment available That's true. across platforms, That's the true. time you wake up to the time you sleep, whether it's Alexa or your mobile phone, your laptop or your TV, um, how does why should one be a why should one listen to Chopin? Why should one sh- listen to Beethoven? Why should one listen to good classical music? Is there any actual tangible benefit to being an aficionado of 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 western classical music i think the music speaks for itself because um, there are people who don't understand western classical music but when you listen to it it's something that cannot be put in words you know listening to it like this is something uh, somehow it has a calming effect number one but when you go to a concert just like what the theater person told you the live experience is completely different you know you you have people around you okay uh, you're sitting there and you're watching you're watching the pianist you're watching the emotions you're hearing the nuances you're hearing the music and i i i also cannot put it in words because right, right. i've been to so many live concerts i've been to operas i've been to musicals i've been to classical music whatever but when you come out from that hall something has changed right 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 you know and you go back with that with that vibe of the concert that you just attended you probably still think about it you dream about it when you go home i'm talking about like the the good quality of course, talking yeah? about and you'll still be thinking about it a true joy of music performance you know you'll still be thinking about it weeks after some way it flashes oh yeah that concert you know something that um, There's a movie called The Lives of Others, a German film that I've heard Oscar. about it. I've heard you know, about it. It was the best foreign film right. uh, that year. Right. I mean, it was. Um, this is about. Uh, I'm telling you this because you uh, you might find this very interesting. Right. Uh, the story is about this uh, Germany after the World Second World War. Right. East Germany, West Germany. Correct. There were spies in East Germany whose job was to, like in China today, right. see what people are talking. So right. Anyone speaks against the government. Right. Or uh, tries to do propaganda against the regime. Right, they'll be taken sent taken, somewhere. Right, right. Uh, so there were spies monitoring uh, back then everybody's lives. Right. Uh, so our main character is a spy who has to keep his eye on these two, three, the theater group, oh. German theater, okay. who were the that time they were activists. You right, know? They were, right. Uh, what can I say? Uh, people who were. Um, Artists, a lot of artists back in the mm. era were also politically very uh, connected. Right. right, they were involved in the politics of the day. Right. So his job was to keep an eye on this man. What they were doing. And his girlfriend lived with him, and he's listening to them all the time. And this is one time where 
they find out that one of their friends who is part of the group uh, has been uh, caught by the government and has been assassinated and is dead and they hear this news and they're very sad and the man goes and uh, plays a piece on the piano ah. i don't know what piece this is okay, okay. Uh, i must see the movie now at least okay. for this he plays a beautiful uh, piece on the piano and that man also listens he is listening to the music through this uh, whatever hidden uh, hidden you know, device audio device yeah. and at the end of it in german uh, the man says uh, for whatever reason i forget why he says uh, anyone who has listened to this cannot be the same yeah and the movie is so beautiful that that man has a change of heart that spy has a change of heart and for the rest of the film he does his best to protect them from the same people i see you know uh, beautiful movie so mm. i i suppose that is the power of classical music right western or otherwise i, I think can, i think of probably all music but on different levels and in different mm. capacities in terms of the emotions uh, because you know if you have uh you know music that's uh, f- say for example heavy metal or whatever that will affect you in a different way you know if you go for a western classical concert that will affect you in a different yes. way whatever it is there is an effect right right you know when you're talking about professional concerts there is an effect no i think compared to modern music while of course it's yeah. enjoyable even yeah. some of the big bands that i've grown up with whether it's right. pearl jam or right. uh, nirvana whether it's uh, you know even popular bands like metallica for example right. of course you go to one of, you hear them you see the performance right. videos in yes. stock or you know all these uh, uh, huge uh, concerts right. rock concerts but i suppose it's not i think i i'd like to believe the effect may is of that is more momentary and temporary yeah, and it's okay. a great memory to have yes. you know like but i went the long lasting effect but i believe i think classical music Western and Indian, mm. and even yes, uh, Sufi yes, uh, yes, music. Yes, yes. I think classical music somehow it it it's it touches you on a different level. I'd like to believe it has restorative power. Yeah. Number one, yeah. and I suppose at some level, if you can truly appreciate that, yeah, you can not. You can only be a better person. Right. You know? And I think. Uh, Hi. Oh. Hi. Hi. You can grab her, please. the mic gobbles okay now you're doing the job now the gobble hi she's very spoiled she's Aww. spoiled cat she's spoiled jungly yeah this <laughs> now that the cat is uh, i think even she's like how why are you guys talking so long so i'm going to uh, end this by sure. asking you one question that could be practically useful i'll use it as a promo clip or something if someone were see classical music is wide western yes. classical music is huge right uh, and there's so many tracks and so many artists even a guy like me who's somewhat inclined to music um, i don't know anything about uh, uh, apart from the names right if someone were to try to start and uh, start listening to western classical right. music to right try to understand and become a real listener uh, where should one start like if i wanted after this conversation i want to understand western classical music better i want to appreciate western classical music where do i start because i'm sure if i listen to some of the pieces it's too complex for me I have one name for you, Mozart. Mozart. Okay. So he. Mozart somehow has a universal appeal, whether you know classical music or not. Somehow everyone loves Mozart for some okay. reason. Okay. Okay. And do you know, uh, th- there was a study conducted, and some hospitals do this. Apparently, uh, uh, patients who are recovering from surgery, they recover much faster when Mozart is being played through the speakers. Oh, not just classical music, but within classical Mozart. music. Mozart has a higher healing power. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. What is it about his music that does it? So they don't know why, but they do know that it happens. It happens. That's incredible. You can research that and see. And um, but for any like complete beginner, go to Mozart first. Okay. And you will be just it, uh, it's probably the elegance and the grace and the symmetry in his music that will right. get you right and i think you may not understand anything else but that symmetry of the music is it's perfect the blue danube is no blue danube is not by mozart that's that's, well that's by uh, johann strauss okay johann strauss of yes. course <laughs> and of course uh, one of my favorite uh, classical um, western classical music pieces is uh, um, oh my god i forget it's it's by beethoven it's uh, for release Uh, is it for release is a famous hymn it's like him yeah. ode to joy ode to joy that's from oh, the that's goodness. from the ninth symphony I, I th- and that was a breakthrough symphony by the way because you see a symphony is basically a work for orchestra 
Beethoven was probably the first person to introduce a chorus in there. Nobody knew that was coming. Well, he was the first person who introduced a chorus. A chorus in a symphony. Okay. Because a symphony is actually a work for orchestra. It's okay. not for voices. Okay. So suddenly, you know, and the symphony number no. nine is a grand. It's oh on a grand God. scale. Even now, I don't believe in Christianity <laughs> or Jesus. Even now, I can get goosebumps. Yeah, because play. the way that he leads up to it, and then suddenly, when the choir bursts oh. into the ta da di da da, right? You're like, oh, isn't oh, yeah. it? Goosebumps. Go absolute goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. Absolute goosebumps. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that is one of my. Uh, uh, Like I, I think, think it's also one of the most recognized pieces. One in the of the world, most right? recognized pieces. Yeah, yes, I can imagine. Right. And what is uh, Mozart's most famous? Because I know th- again, we all probably know these tunes, but don't know how to name them. Uh, probably uh, Turkish March. How does that? Tiradaram, tiradaram, tiradaram. Of course, yeah. of course. And uh, I mean, his operas are wonderful, but a lot of his piano sonatas are very easy to listen. I'm to. sure we all even know them, but we don't know it's probably Mozart's piece. Probably, probably, like everybody, yeah, every human being. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no It'll be used in some ad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, some movie, you know. <laughs> Tom and Jerry. I know for yeah. Tom and Jerry. No, a lot of people when they listen to classical music, they're like, "Oh, this is the music. Uh, this is Tom and Jerry music." <laughs> They actually there's say a, there's that there's an Oscar-winning Tom and Jerry piece where Tom plays. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's dun, that's dun, the list Hungarian dun, rhapsody. Dun, 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 dun. Is that's not Mozart? No, it's list. Oh, that's what? a a good friend of Chopin's actually. Okay. okay. So that's the Hungarian dun, rhapsody. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I remember <laughs> I was a kid watching this cartoon where Tom is this concert pianist. Very. And Jerry lives in the piano. That's right. I've seen that cartoon my many times. My mind was blown as a kid, and yes. even now as an adult. Actually, my mind is more blown as an adult. As a kid, I enjoyed it and <laughs> yeah. laughed at it, but as an adult, I'm just blown yes. by that particular. And there's another one. You must see this. You might see Tom and Jerry, where uh, I think uh, Tom is a uh, cellist or a violinist. Violinist, okay. Right? And he's very famous. Right. right. Vienna. In right. Vienna. Right. Vienna. And Jerry has a problem of dancing when. Uh, uh, this music is played. Okay. So Tom, while he's playing, Jerry starts dancing, and then Tom wants to catch Jerry because he's a cat. Correct. Right. 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 So then the concert stops. Okay. And, right. And then he has to start again, and Jerry comes again, and. Okay. So eventually, they both make peace because people real love the, the playing and the dancing, and, the, okay. and they become sort of a, a group right, that right. performs together. No, they make peace. Uh, right. But the music they use even in that. Right. <laughs> no, actually, to be very honest, I think Tom and Jerry introduced classical music to people without even, without them even knowing Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. right? Yeah. Like a lot of that. Like, I, I, I hadn't, I hadn't even thought of these cartoons. Right. Till this conversation. Right. I don't think I've thought of this in many years. Right. But that was possibly my introduction to Western classical music, Tom and Jerry, and it goes to show that even. Cartoons that are made for kids, kids, have so much depth and quality. That's in them, right. That's right. You know. Yes. And I think. That's the difference, and I suppose that's why uh, the world, society today, entertainment especially, has lost a lot of charm. I think the word is charm because it lacks depth. I think. I agree with you. It lacks that uh, soul that mm. is just so pure. Mm. No? Of course. Uh, no, there are exceptions, obviously, but on the whole. On the oh, in general, I'm yeah. Sure. In general, yeah. I mean, yeah. of course, there yeah. are. Uh, there's still a lot of yes. talent in the world. Yes. 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 Uh, people performing to packed audiences in some part that's of the right, world. That's right. That's right. Yeah, but sure. on the whole, it's um, well. Uh, you know, an industry is not doing well if eighty percent of that people in the industry are not doing well. Yes. You know what I'm saying? If only twenty percent of musicians are making money and uh, able to live uh, comfortably, then obviously there is a mm. there is a problem. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I don't see. want to end on a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I I I'll, I'm going to end uh, with this uh, on encouraging people to I suppose listen to uh, uh, listen classical music because especially in the mornings when I only time when I play Western classical no uh, I think it does affect your mood and it does it does actually change your perception for the rest of the day it does it does right it does um, so at least for that reason I hope uh, more and more people listen to uh, Western classical music and uh, your Can you just tell us uh, as we end about your school and what kind of people do you take and how can like who like just for, I don't know, for a lot of people don't even know. Some no, it's it's it. open to anyone who see as I mentioned to you, 
not everyone is uh, going to be professional musicians but it's open to students who are very serious about their right. music education right. it's not just you know something that they'll practice uh, a hobby that you're doing for some time a day before uh, right. you know your lesson but something right. that you take seriously i th- i so, think also people i would encourage people uh, including me because um, i keep trying to play the guitar on and off and stopping <laughs> starting stopping starting and all of that um because even uh, individually i think learning music or knowing music i'm assuming uh, but of course you're a professional so it's, it's hard to compare yourself to other people i think music plays a role in um, developing the personality yes. and yes. the mind yes it does it does right? it, it does it creates yeah. a bigger harmony yes uh, uh, in, in life yeah. so no there are a lot of changes when right? the kid takes up music yeah. whether it be piano or the guitar or the violin or whatever it is something happens even if they don't become professional no, i think they understanding have... the craft truly yes. like truly and, learning it. and uh, being an important part of their lives because that will stay with them for the rest of their lives whatever profession that might they might take right. up if music is very important to them you know that actually kind of influences perhaps their yeah. decisions the way that they live you know you are right i think uh, learning or making music a serious part of your life yes. possibly could also make you uh, a a softer kinder yes person with a yes. lot more compassion in general yes there no, are, there are exceptions yeah, yeah. but but i mean ozzy was one of the most so violent uh, musician i know you know <laughs> apart from no, but him but there are some very unkind musicians also <laughs> yeah but that could also stem from years of frustration also i guess yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in general all the musicians i've known right? yeah uh, professional and otherwise people who are serious musicians on on the whole they've tended to be uh, nice soft people mm. you know who mind their own business mm, and mm. they just involved with their right, music right yeah. right so yeah i would encourage uh, more and more people <laughs> to uh, and if one were to reach out to your school uh uh see is there a website um, the thing is we are not really i'm sorry to say this but we are not really interested Open in like public. gathering a huge number of oh. students we have a limited i mean we have a small number of students but they most of them are very good students okay. and the problem that i face is the right kind of teachers so at the moment i have very few teachers okay. they are all full right. we have a waiting list right. people have been waiting so things for haven't changed in 17 years <laughs> so i remember the waiting 2 years list. waiting list yeah how will i fill the waiting yeah. list i need to find a good teacher right. because i'm very particular about the teachers the quality of the music you teach yeah so okay. you know that's very important our teachers right now are absolutely fantastic very difficult to find someone right. like them right. so unless i find a good teacher then we can go down the waiting you know, list but some of them would have already started with somebody else anyway i mean who will a, wait for 2 years has it occurred as <laughs> far i'm saying has it occurred to you that the world operates in exactly the opposite, opposite. manner because the success and commercial success comes purely through scalability that's but the word but we are not today. interested in the, the commercial opposite. aspect wow, we are wow, not interested really. in that that's, at all that is uh, that is also <laughs> very encouraging to hear that there are still people who are so passionate about their craft yes. that the emphasis is on the uh, on the craft and the quality that's right that's right that's what scalability. that's what we are interested in well I, i'm so happy to hear that <laughs> thank you so much once again no, i cannot thank you enough you are most welcome uh, for uh, taking the time out and coming and having this chat with me uh i'm i'm definitely the better for it and I, i'm sure someone will see it and i'm sure they'll be the better for it as well okay all the very best to you and i hope uh, in general for the sake of the city of bangalore uh classical music of all sorts including western classical music flourishes and we have a society that uh, values music and musicians a bit more thank you so much thank you so much i hope that happens yeah i hope so too <laughs> yeah, thank you